guys, I'm gonna do a niche deep dive today. Something I might start regularly doing and just call it niche deep dive. And I wanna explore every single time I do this, I wanna go into a niche, a new niche. I've never, well, maybe I've talked about it, but I haven't gone into depth. And I'm gonna tell you um, what my experience has been, uh, what the, the pros, the cons, and honestly, just like my verdict, if I would recommend that niche. And today, I wanna talk about drywall. Okay, it's a, so we're gonna talk about all facets of drywall, dry, not drywall, drywall, okay? I will tell you this, and I wanna, I wanna make this really clear. I will never, let me repeat, never do a niche. I'm never gonna deep dive a niche that I haven't actually done myself. This is never gonna be theory. This is gonna be 100% experience, firsthand experience only. So I will tell you, I have a couple of drywall sites right now. Um, the, and I will also tell you that I have not built a drywall site in a couple years. Okay. So I want to go into this because I want to explain the pros and the cons. So the thing that I liked and why I experimented with drywall in the first place is it's a home service. It's something that people are going to have to need. You, you, you have to do drywall, right? That's how homes are built is with drywall. Sorry, I had a notification, just swiped it out. So I like that. I like that it was, you know, it was it was something that people needed. It wasn't really a nicety; it was a necessity. So that's why I was like, okay, let me check this out. Um, I also like that it was semi high margin, right? It's kind of similar to duct cleaning in that you basically have your labor and you know you got your materials, but like it's it's fairly decent margin. Um, there's a couple of things I liked, and I I liked that there was demand. So any city you look, there's going to be demand for drywall because homes require drywall. Well, at least here in the US. Now, some of you that maybe are watching this, you're overseas. If the homes, if, if you don't even know what drywall is, then this is going to be specific to the US or to places that use drywall. But I would just tell you if your homes are built with some other material, maybe you could apply this the exact same frameworks, the same uh, things that I'm sharing with that specific uh, way that homes are built. So I built a website here where I live. And I also built a website in a city that's within driving distance. Okay, I'll just say that. And I was able to successfully, you know, build these sites, get clients, pre-sell them. You know how I do using my own system, using my own process, using everything I teach in digital landlords. I was able to get clients and pre-sell these deals. Awesome. Okay. But here's what I, I found. Okay, I landed these deals. I did everything textbook. I made sure I didn't over-promise. I made sure I over-delivered. All of it. And the thing that I hate about drywall is it's not super high ticket. Let me clarify. These websites that we build, you're not going to get like a whole house to be dry. Like that's not what you're going to get. If, if these websites pulled, these websites that we build, these digital uh, real estate properties, these, these lead gen sites, if they were able to pull – you know, whole homes, uh, dry, you know, drywall for an entire house, that would be a different story. But here's the thing. And this reminds me a lot of some other niches like electrical, like, you know, electrician, et cetera, where homes need to be drywalled. But when homes are built, contractors, they, they have their guy, right? Or their girl or their company that they already use. Every time, if you have a contractor or a home builder, Every time they do a house, they don't go and say, well, let me Google the next guy. Like they already have somebody that they're using. And so when they build a house, they're like, I'm going to call my person. I'm going to call my sub. And, or maybe I've got a couple subs, but very rarely do they go to Google and type it in. So you usually aren't going to get the entire house. If you do get an entire house, it's because somebody is doing a remodel. And if somebody's doing a remodel that is not a contractor, it's typically somebody that is trying to save money. And if they're trying to save money, they're trying to go for the cheapest option. So you're not getting the entire home drywall jobs, okay? So that makes it so it's not as interesting, right? Period. The difference between drywall and concrete is if, if, if you're gonna hire someone to do concrete, you're typically just gonna hire them, whether it's an entire pool deck, whether it's a, a little piece of a sidewalk, you're just gonna get somebody to come and do it, right? Not the case with drywall. So typically what you get is these little oddball jobs. You get these one-offs. You get the, oh, my kids were playing and they were roughhousing and we put an elbow through a wall. Or, oh, something happened, the TV fell off the wall or the whiteboard fell off the wall and we need you to come replace. Like 
they're not that big of jobs. And so what happens is these homeowners, they have no idea what this is gonna cost and they're just looking to do the cheapest thing possible. Like they're just trying to go cheap, right? So you combine the cheap with the small jobs and you're left with the not, not the greatest jobs ever, right? You're left with the scraps. So you start sending scraps to your business owner and your business owner, they might be happy about it in the beginning because maybe they're a new company or in the case that I had, I was able to find a company that they had a lot of homes they were doing, but they also wanted those like jobs that they could go and send their guys out to, to just keep them busy, keep them on payroll, right? So I was like, this is going to be a perfect fit. You know, and I've actually done this successfully with a couple of companies. I did this with Stucco as well, where I had this company that does, ton, that does tons of Stucco, but they wanted those like little one-off jobs to just keep their guys busy so that they didn't have to like, you know, fire them during the off season or the slow time. So it worked out, right? But with this, what happens, and this, is, this happens a lot with companies, is they're happy to do these one-off jobs until they start getting busy until they make a couple relationships with contractors, until they start consistently getting homes. And then the second that happens, they start looking at the numbers and going, dude, not only do I not even want to, like, do I not want to pay for these leads because they're not homes, they're just these one-offs, but I don't even want to do these. I don't even have time to do these. And so in both cases, what happened to me is the business owners, they, they were happy about them. They wanted them, that we, things were going good. I explained they're not gonna get huge jobs. They're gonna fill the gaps. But in both cases, these businesses got busy because they did good work and they got a couple contract relationships. And in both cases, they called me and said, it just does not make sense. Even if we were getting these leads for free, it does not make sense for us to pay for leads that we can't even get to anyway. Which leads me back to and wraps me up with the fact that I can kind of use this as a blanket statement. Any service that you know you're not going to get the big jobs from, okay, because of contractor relationships. So anything related to a home, like I would, I would even argue something like, you know, cabinets, right? Like cool cabinets wouldn't work for a number of reasons, but with cabinets, again, a home builder, they got their cabinet person. All you're going to get is somebody that like wants to repair a cabinet or fix one room or fix this one little section. And you're dealing with the homeowner and they're just trying to go cheap or you're dealing with a flipper or you're dealing with a remodeler. It's like, it's just not the greatest scenario. So long story short, I, the, here's the cool part. These properties were paid for with their money. I have assets that I own that are producing leads every single month. I honestly just haven't gotten around. There haven't been a priority to go and find replacement tenants for. But again, I was willing to try out this niche because somebody else paid for it. And cool, I have a couple properties I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find replacements for. But I have a feeling it's gonna be in every you know 18 months, two years. I'm probably gonna have to find a new business owner. It just is what it is. Um, if we compared it to regular real estate, maybe it's like that little town home that everyone moves into before they go into their house that they buy. You just kind of accept it. But I am going to tell you, I will not be building additional drywall websites. And by the way, I took my own advice and I, I niched down and I just went after keywords like drywall repair, things like that, because I just knew I wasn't going to get a ton of drywall jobs. Nonetheless, <clears throat> with this niche deep dive, my verdict is don't do it, not worth it. I've tested it. And here's the cool part about these videos. It's the cool part about me actually doing this and not being one of those guys that made $10,000 one time and now I'm saying buy my thing. I've actually done this. I'm doing it. Like I literally have two websites right now that I, that I own, two assets. And I'm telling you right now, I will not be building another drywall website. You can take it. You can leave it. Don't trust me. Just go try it.